The following is a feature presentation of Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network. Mislu Television Sports and the International Hot Rod Association welcome you to the 1983 Spring Nationals Drag Race Championships. I'm Ralph Hamilton here at Thunder Valley Dragway in Bristol, Tennessee for the 1983 Spring Nationals. With me, our drag racing expert, Al Segrini. Not only an expert, Al will be competing in the pro funny car division here this afternoon. I'm telling you, it's going to be a heck of a show. A lot of great cars have qualified. It's been the tightest field I've been in a long time. I think low qualifier was a 592, and the bump spot was a 601. It's the tightest field I've seen in a long time. Certainly is yeah, going to be some top-notch competition, not only in the professional funny car category, the pro dragsters and those wild pro stock machines. On tap for us here is going to be some great, great drag racing. Al, I think we know that the drivers are going to be going all out for what has to be one of the largest cash prizes in the sport of racing. Oh, for sure. There's no coming back. Every driver's going to put it, give it all it has. There's no returning. If you lose, you're out, and you're not able to continue. So, I mean, every driver's going to hang it out. They'll sacrifice a couple of pistons here and there to win this race. Well, we've got beautiful weather for us here during the Spring Nationals. Right now, the first round of the professional funny car category is about ready to move up to the line. Let's turn it back to Mislu Control. Ken Squire here at Mislu Race Control at a track which is extremely significant in the history of American drag racing. It was here at Thunder Valley that Larry Carrier first formed the International Hot Rod Association. And that adds extra emphasis to these spring national championships. It's one of the largest purses in the history of drag racing, and it brings out the very best. What's drag racing all about? Well, let's see it from the driver's seat in the Ford Thunderbird of Ricky Smith.
probably the worst qualifying position that you can get, which is five, which I get to race Gary Beck, who's number one, and he's two, ten two, two tenths of a second quicker than what I am. good about today uh, we qualified right where we wanted to and it's on a good side of the sheet and I feel like we'll run real good and we should be in the finals.
We're here in the pit area right now with Al Segrini, the driver of the Super Brute Pontiac Funny Car. A little bit about your background. What type of training do you have to drive this type of fuel funny car? Well, we started with an injected funny car, which is it's non-supercharged. It's on nitromethane, the same fuel that we run, but it's not as powerful a motor as these, this type of a car. And we, that's how I started, from A funny car, and we progressed on up to double A funny car. Well, this certainly is an impressive team effort that you have uh, given us here this weekend. Cost a lot of money to operate this type of racing team, doesn't it? Well, definitely. It, this type of racing, if you're going to race on a caliber that we do, you have to do it. We were fortunate enough to have a sponsor, Fabergé, to sponsor us in this racing operation we have. We have an excellent crew this year. Everything's going very well with us. We're progressing on. We're winning a lot of races, and we're really, really pleased with it. Well, of course, the car that Al drives is a 1983 Pontiac Trans Am. Let's take a look and see just what makes up a fuel funny car. Well, it does look very much like your standard 1983 Pontiac, but underneath uh, this thin fiberglass shell, it's something totally different. Let's lift the body off and take a look. Let's take a peek. Well, as you can see with the body off, it certainly doesn't look like any Pontiac Trans Am I've ever seen. Let's start at the front, Al. What's this big thing up here? Well, this is this car, it runs on nitromethane. It's great. It, this fuel tank right here holds approximately 15 gallons. It takes about anywhere from 11 and a half to 12 gallons to make a full quarter of a mile pass in this type of a car. It's not very good fuel mileage at all. Moving back a little bit, we have the heart of any race car, and that's the engine. The engine in this car, however, is far different from the one that's in your own passenger car. Big thing up on top. Fuel, it's a fuel injection system on top of this supercharger. This motor produces approximately 2,500 horsepower, which will in turn can propel this car under six seconds over 250 miles an hour. All right, it's kind of a tight fit in there for you, Al. Just exactly what does a driver of one of these pro funny cars have to do during a quarter mile run, which could take less than six seconds? Whoever leaves the starting line, he has one hand on the steering, which is a butterfly style steering wheel. It ha this type of a car has a handbrake. Now the driver has to do when the car is staged with the handbrake and his foot's on the accelerator and the light turns to green, the driver releases the brake, puts both hands on the steering wheel, press the accelerator full throttle to leave. Approximately about 600 foot, the driver has to take one hand off and this is your shift down. He has to make one shift from low gear into high gear and back up on the steering wheel again. Once the driver reaches a quarter of a mile down at the finish line, when the body is on the car, the parachute release lever is about here. The driver puts the parachute out, releases the throttle, comes over to this hand, shuts the fuel off. It's the only way this car shuts off is with the fuel. There's no ignition system as far as in the car for the driver. Thusly, he gets back on the handbrake and proceeds to start to slow down once the car reaches approximately under 100 miles an hour with the parachute. That's quite an awful lot to have to do in less than six seconds. We'll probably see Al Segrini do that in the Fabergé Super Brute Pontiac Funny Car a little bit later on this weekend here at the 1983 IHRA Spring Nationals.
uh, the car spun a little that run, uh, but hopefully it'll do a little better in the final. Uh, we slowed down, I think, four hundredths that time from our previous run. And Ricky, uh, I guess, had a little more trouble than we did. He slowed down quite a bit more, so it looks like we have a uh, lane choice in the final. Uh, I hope that'll be an advantage. Down here at the finish line, the winner, the 1983 Spring Nationals and Pro Stock Eliminator, Ricky Smith. Ricky? God only knows. I'm just glad I won it. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited right now. I don't even know what to say. Uh, I definitely appreciate Motocraft and Ford behind me this year. They've been behind me 100%. This first year, I've had a good deal. I won the championship last year. I'm leading it now by a good change. If the Lord will stay with me and give me some more luck this year, I believe I can win it again. Well, it was reaction time that did the job. Shepard was actually a tenth of a second quicker. I was ready. That's all I could say. You know, Shepard had me covered a little. You have a tendency to be a little slack when you got somebody covered. It's just natural for a man to be that way. And, you know, I didn't have nothing to lose. I had to go, and I got away with a good light. All right, well, congratulations, Ricky Smith, Pro Stock Champion here at the Spring Nationals.
Mark Oswald, Spring National Pro Funny Car Champion. Mark, the whole shot there in the starting line that did the job for you. Yeah, we didn't really have anything to lose. We kind of came into the finals an underdog. We ran real good yesterday, but we kind of struggled today trying to get a hold of the racetrack. So we really didn't have anything to lose. Feels pretty good. Last year we were had everything. We were had everybody covered going into the final, and we lost. So we kind of turned it around this year. Well, it certainly was a very, very tough race. Uh, quite a difference in the elapsed times, though, with Don Perdome going 586. You turned six seconds flat. That starting line reaction making all the difference in the world in this final run. Yeah, sometimes it's pretty critical. Well, $20,000 will certainly help the budget for the Candies and Hughes Pro Funny Car. Once again, congratulations to Mark Oswald, Pro Funny Car Champion here at the Spring Nationals. Thank you. A very successful weekend for the Larry Miner, Pro Dragster with Gary Beck behind the wheel. Gary, not only a Pro Dragster winner here at the Winston Spring Nationals, a brand new national record to boot. Well, we're real pleased with the car's performance this weekend. Uh, we haven't had a chance to run the entire series with the IHRA, and, and uh, we're glad the car ran extremely well. And, and uh, we're real happy to get the, the national record. Uh, uh, the track was in excellent shape. It was a good crowd here this weekend, and we're glad to put on good drag racing for them. Well, when they came out here this weekend, they saw the very finest in the pro dragster category, Gary Beck.
It is an American phenomenon, the world of drag racing, and for the most part, it was created on tracks exactly like this. It's homecoming here when they come back to Thunder Valley in Bristol, Tennessee, and they really gave you an extra special added attraction today with the competition we've seen. For Ralph Hamilton and Al Segrini, I'm Ken Squire at the Summer...